We're coming off a 29-5 and season, and I think this is the year we get an invite to a bigger conference, assuming we win our third straight Horizon League Championship. I'll be playing the entire season in this video, and since this is the best roster we have had yet, my goal is to make the tournament with an at-large bid. I feel like Northern Kentucky can do it, and in our season opener against number 17 Indiana, we're gonna get a huge win. Now, I'll be jumping in the games here and there throughout the year, but I'm just glad to see that we're off to a 4-0 start, along with making the ESPN Invitational Championship. This is the first one I feel like I have to hop into, and that's because we're playing for a preseason championship today where Sam Vincent is going to swat that out of there as we get an early defensive stop. However, that didn't stop Iowa State from going on an 8-2 run, so we had to rely on our star player to keep the undefeated season alive. The only new face in the starting lineup is freshman point guard John Cummings, and you know he's smart since he's an engineering major. He came into NKU as a four-star recruit, and it forced me to play two point guards at once, but it was setting up amazing shots. With about a minute left in the first half though, we'd fall behind by seven because we failed to box out. So fortunately, once again, Sam Vinson was the answer to all of our problems, and we had shot way worse through the first 20 minutes, but forward Awadi Teal came out in the second half stroking it, and all I can say was he was not playing like a normal power forward, which was great because he sparked a level of energy that I can't even explain. The Cyclones were trying their hardest to give us our first loss of the year, but we worked extremely hard to maintain a two-point lead for most of the half, and then Awadi Teal's third three-pointer of the night would give us the extra boost we really needed as Iowa State would go cold in the final few minutes of the game like Arizona did against Princeton. Hopefully, this wouldn't be the only tournament we win this season, and after we tore apart Fullerton, it was time to travel to Chapel Hill. The craziest thing was how many highly ranked recruits wanted to play for NKU, and I'll tell you who we're targeting after we try to stay undefeated against the Tar Heels. As a 12 seed, we knocked them out of the tournament last season, so I was not surprised that they came out playing for revenge. After falling behind by 9 points early, this rebound and put back by backup center Grant Booker got us on the board, but we really struggled to put anything in the basket for a large portion of the first half, so I was thrilled they made the mistake of leaving Sam Vinson wide open, and at this point, he was going to give all North Carolina fans nightmares, because he was the only player on the court that seemed to be able to score for us. However, the Tar Heels kept on getting buckets, and we went into the half down by 10, but since we were shooting 21% from the field, it couldn't get any worse than this, and thankfully, John Cummins was playing like a beast, which was very needed since they started locking down on Sam Vinson. In, but it honestly didn't seem like it was going to matter in the end because with less than five minutes remaining we were still trailing by 13 and I didn't know if this big of a comeback would be possible for us. Center Emmanuel Zorgville finally made an appearance for us with a swat on one end and a tough bucket on the other end which was great and then Sam Vinson gave a poor Tar Heel a huge facial and he was definitely the light of this team but he was missing wide open threes so I had to put in sharpshooter Isaiah Mason to take them for now. North Carolina center clearly wasn't very happy. We were getting it close. And with 47 seconds left, we needed a fast bucket, but Sam Vinson couldn't hit it. And it seemed like the dreams of the comeback were going to fall short as they were not missing their free throws. So unfortunately, we were gonna lose our first game of the season to the Tar Heels. On the bright side though, the 13th and 19th best players in the country committed to NKU and we'd go on to win our next two games. So we were gonna be eight and one going into rivalry week, and this year we got to host the Cincinnati Bearcats. I also noticed that the game actually gave us a banner for our tournament run last season, and I thought that was a really cool detail in the game. Anyways, if we wanted an at-large bid, we would pretty much have to win every remaining matchup on our schedule, but I was going to have to make a coaching change that I did not want to do. Currently, we simply were not able to keep up with teams scoring-wise, and it just didn't make sense to start two point guards. So after Sam Vinson ran down the court, and brought us within one. I subbed out Larry Alvarez, and all I can say is having a score like Isaiah Mason made a big difference. Going into the half, we were actually winning, and you know that Sam Vincent came out of the locker room lighting it up. With multiple shooters on the court, our spacing was so much better, and even freshman John Cummings was starting to drain them from D. Now obviously, Isaiah Mason still had some learning to do, but his fast release was going to end up being lethal, and all 
of a sudden, Cincinnati went completely cold from the field. I mean, they weren't able to hit anything but the side of the rim, and by the time they started playing better, it was too late for them, so we got a massive win over our rivals. School pride could not have been higher, and after starting conference play with a win, we were thrown into another rivalry game, and Wright State was probably the only team that could beat us in the Horizon League. They were standing between us and a bigger conference invite, so I was not happy we started off so poorly, but honestly, I can't even put all the blame on the guys because we were just getting unlucky. Eventually, our shots were finally starting to fall in, which meant that with less than two minutes left in the half, we tied it back up, but it wouldn't last long as they would miss it off the side of the backboard and somehow get points seconds later. I will say, leaving Isaiah Mason wide open was not their best decision, and our star player, Sam Vinson, got things going with this tough double clutch bucket. If you can't already tell, this Northern Kentucky team was extremely fun to coach, and I enjoyed every bit of the ending to the half. My team was developing their best chemistry yet as they were passing around until they found an open shooter, and this was exactly how we needed to play if we wanted to make a deep tournament run this season. However, with a little over two minutes remaining, Wright State got it back within three, so thank goodness power forward Awadi Teal drained this contested jumper, and then we forced an extremely important defensive stop on this missed shot, which led to John Cummings helping us seal it by hitting a jumper off of the inbounds play. We beat our conference rivals, which was huge, and now we have the rest of the season to finish, where we hopefully won't make many mistakes. Speaking of mistakes, car accidents happen all the time, and you need to know what you would do if you found yourself in one. Obviously, the first thing you have to do is make sure you're okay, and then you need to get a police report and make sure you contact your insurance, but after that, you have got to get legal representation, and that is super easy to do with Morgan & Morgan, because with only eight clicks on your phone, you're able to submit a claim and have a lawyer review your case. Morgan & Morgan has definitely modernized the injury law process, so if you're ever injured in an accident, know that you can check out Morgan & Morgan. Over 3 million people call them every year in a time of need because you can submit a claim in 8 clicks or less without having to leave your couch. For more information, go to forthepeople.com slash Bordeaux or dial pound law, that is pound 529 from your cell phone, and now I'm gonna sim to the conference tournament. We ended the regular season with a 27-3 and record, and that was an enough to get us the one seed in the Horizon League. With our first game being against Robert Morris, if we wanted to get an invite to a bigger conference next year, we would have to win the Horizon League tournament, and even though we were ranked 22nd in the country going into this one, we needed to get as high of a seed in March Madness as possible. Watching Larry Alvarez downfall all season has been pretty painful, especially when he commits mistakes that swing all of the momentum, but Isaiah Milson killed his confidence by taking his start spot, and with him in the lineup, we had been playing so much better as a team. After going on a 9-1 to run, we were starting to completely take control of the semifinal game, and we honestly had many different chances to bury them, but we kept missing shots, and number one kept getting buckets for Robert Morris, so we unfortunately went into the half only up by two points, and it makes sense since the Colonials were shooting 64% from the floor. They opened up the second like that percentage wasn't going to go back to reality anytime soon, and for a team that's supposed to be making a deep tournament run soon, we can't be in a close game with Robert Morris. They clearly had the magic of March on their side today, and the only reason we kept our lead was because Isaiah Mason was hitting everything he threw up. Surprisingly, when Larry Alvarez finally did get subbed back in, he came in and made a difference, and from there, it stayed a five-point game for three straight minutes as we held on extremely well. Then, Awadi Teal extended our lead by simply being the stronger player on the court, but Robert Morris just refused to bend over and give up. After Sam Vincent missed the and one free throw, he stupidly fouled on a three-pointer attempt, and it was now only a one-possession game. At least John Cummings drilled both of his free throws, though, and then coming out of timeout, Robert Morris went for the quick basket, but they failed, which let a Wadi Teal seal the deal. It wasn't pretty, but we made the Horizon League Championship where we would be taking on Green Bay. If we were going to make it far farther than the first weekend in March Madness, we needed to get in much better form, and I felt like a big win could help us potentially secure a top 5 seed in the tournament, which we were on pace to do as Isaiah Mason continued to impress everybody. With this Sam Vincent 3 pointer, we were on a 13-2 run, and Green Bay had to take a timeout to regroup, but I told Isaiah Mason to pull it from wherever to crush him even more if he got an opportunity, and it's safe to
to say that they didn't know what to do. By the time that they started to finally figure it out, it was too late as they went into the half trailing by 17 points, and they were simply never able to get back into it, making us Horizon League champions for the third straight year. We were ranked number 20 going into Selection Sunday, and obviously we weren't expecting a one seed, but this draw could end up being brutal for us. Somehow Duke, Kansas, Kentucky, and Yukon all made our region, but for now we just had to worry about Weber State, and hopefully they don't have a Damian Lillard 2.0 on their team, because I don't want to get upset earlier than expected like Purdue does every year. I'm not quite sure why they kept trying to press us from the jump, but it was not working for them, and the only guy keeping the Wildcats in it was point guard Keith Dinwiddie Jr. We've gone from being the underdog to being the team that could get upset, and so far Sam Vinson was putting on a turnover clinic, so after we gave up 11 straight points to Weber State, we needed a bucket fast and Isaiah Mason delivered. However, the most surprising thing was how poorly Sam Vinson was playing, and the only thing we could do on this 2-3 zone was shoot threes. They were simply not rotating fast enough to stay in zone for much longer, and I thought it was going to stay tied, but Keith Dinwiddie Jr. delivered again, so it was a good thing that Sam Vinson finally hit one as we went into the half up by one. It was clear that Weber State was not going to go away, so I'm not quite sure why they went back to a full court press, which did not work for them in the first half. Our weaknesses were definitely being exposed today though, as our lack of size down low got us out-rebounded badly, and we were just lucky John Cummings picked Keith Dinwiddie Jr.'s pockets and took it coast to coast to make sure we stayed ahead. When we needed buckets the most, he was stepping up for us, and with this Isaiah Mason 3, we were officially on a 9-0 run. Weber State had been scoreless for over 2 minutes until this shot went in, and all we had to do was hold on to our lead, which was very safe as John Cummings pulled out this filthy move. It was stressful, but we were moving on to the round of 32, and I have to give props to Weber State for how well they played. Our next matchup was against the Huskies, and if we won, we might end up facing Duke, but for now, it's best to not look ahead and just focus on beating Connecticut, because they were going to be very hard to take down. I didn't know which conference invites we would be getting at the end of the year, but the farther we made it in the tournament, the better, and once Isaiah Mason hit our first three-pointer, of the day, I told everybody to chuck up some more to give us some momentum, and all of a sudden we were on a much needed 8-0 run. This guy thought he was Kemba Walker, but he figured out very quickly that he wasn't, and that actually got him pulled from pretty much the rest of the game. We were handling UConn way better than Weber State, as we had over double their score, and going into the half, I was extremely happy with everybody. This was by far the best we had played against a big school, but the Husky scored 7 straight points to start the second, and I decided it was time to go back to the post offense. Because if they were going to keep making shots like this, we would have to keep up. You could call us 2016 Northern Iowa the way we were choking, and even Isaiah Mason wasn't able to hit his wide open shots anymore, which made this collapse very frustrating to watch. Senior Emmanuel Zorgvol clearly had enough of it though, and with two minutes left, it was a one possession game until Sam Vinson slipped through this beautiful pass. Then, we got the luckiest rim out on the other end, but of course, UConn managed to stay in it as time was winding down, so we kept going back to center Emmanuel Zorgvold, and it was working. However, of course, they still were not willing to miss, and I couldn't explain how worried I was we were actually going to choke, because even though we kept scoring, we continued to let the Huskies stay in it by not grabbing any rebounds, so it would come down to our best free throw shooter and John Cummings was very clutch for a freshman, which was huge because Connecticut would somehow make another three-pointer, but it wasn't enough to overcome the four-point deficit, so we avoided choking our humongous lead, and now we had to take on the one-seeded Blue Devils. Beating Duke would get us a spot in the Elite Eight, but it would be very difficult to win against one of the best teams in the nation, especially because they had so much more size than us, so it was a good thing that Sam 
Vincent was stroking it very well. As three minutes into the game, he was our only scorer so far. Larry Alvarez would come off the bench to break that streak for us, and this hot start was exactly what we needed if we wanted to win, as not only were we scoring with ease, but we were playing fantastic defense. Sam Vincent was finally having a huge game for us, and with a minute left in the first, we had double their score. But I know what you're thinking, and although we could choke this lead as well, it would be hard with Sam Vincent scoring so easily. Since he started the second half by knocking down another tray, I felt like we would be able to cruise to our first ever Elite Eight, and with a minute and a half remaining, we still had a double-digit lead, so we officially knocked out Duke, and as a Kentucky fan, this one felt so good. Now, my Wildcats did get put out by Kansas, so if we wanted to make a Final Four, we would have to take down the two-seeded Jayhawks, and Sam Vincent continued to be a lethal shooter as he got us off to an early 6-0 start. However, this Kansas guard was clearly not very happy about that, and all of a sudden, our lead was erased. At this point, I didn't even feel like we were an underdog anymore because with the way we had played all year, I knew we could beat anybody, but this would be our greatest challenge yet as we couldn't quite pull away, and Kansas was doing a fantastic job of getting tough buckets, while we only had one player that was consistently hitting his shots, so even with Sam Vincent nailing this fadeaway, we went into the half down by two. Isaiah Mason would help us take our lead back to start the second, and the most frustrating play of the game was when he forced a steal, saved it from going out of bounds, and they still got three points out of it. That caused all the momentum to shift Kansas's way very quickly, so that made it so crucial that a Wadi Teal knocked down this pass and then Sam Vincent would pick it up outrun everybody and slam it down. Now when they left Isaiah Mason wide open to give us a five point lead, I thought we would take control, but Kansas was just not willing to go away, and with about two minutes remaining, they tied it up, so we worked incredibly hard to go back up by three on the Jayhawks, but it wouldn't matter because they'd get bailed out by a soft foul call here, and this free throw would make it 35 all. It was clearly going to come down to the wire and Sam Vinson wasn't getting put out now, but neither was Kansas as they tied it up again, giving us the chance to take the final shot where Sam Vincent was wide open from three, but he missed. So we were headed to overtime against the Jayhawks, and the biggest game in school history was going to be a thriller, but we started it off by giving up two very easy buckets, and Isaiah Mason also turned it over with some terrible miscommunication. They had yet to miss a single shot they attempted, and we needed a bucket badly, but it just was not coming for us, so I was relieved when Emmanuel Zorgville finally put one in. Kansas was able to just continue to find ways to keep getting more points though, and our best shooter was no longer hitting threes that he was hitting all season, so after this, we were going to need a miracle to save us, and evidently, John Cummings was sick of watching everybody else miss. Unfortunately, after they missed a free throw, we gave up two points to them anyway, so if this game gets closer in the end, that's going to be the biggest regret that we'll have. All I could do was attempt to foul, and I don't know why Kansas tried to continue to score, but they did, and our size continued to be a disadvantage as it took us so long to finally grab the rebound and get it back. Now it did set up a Larry Alvarez 3 to bring it within 2, but we needed Kansas to miss a free throw, and it didn't seem like that was going to happen again. Then, Sam Vincent threw the ball away on the inbounds play when we were only down by 4, and that would put us behind by 6 points instead. Unfortunately for us, we were going to fall just short of making the final 4 in overtime to the Jayhawks, and our underdog story would come to an end here as we came so close to advancing farther. Auburn would go on to win it all, and now I was just curious if we would get a bigger conference invite. I had officially brought two five stars to Northern Kentucky, and then I got the message we had been hoping for. We'd be in the MAC next year, but Larry Alvarez wouldn't be joining us, so I just gave a scholarship to this four-star center instead, and I was ready to take on our new conference as this team was starting to get extremely good. 